What's up, guys? Derek, moreplaytomoredates.com. Today we are revisiting the Ryan Garcia debacle. This guy has tested positive for Austrian on the day of his fight with Devin Haney. So we got the B sample test results in. We also apparently know the urine concentrations. And I think I have a pretty good idea if he was indeed trying to cheat or not based on the data we have. I can discern a reasonable hypothesis. So anyways, May 1st, Vada sends him the letter that basically says he tested positive for Austrian as well as screened positive as well for 19 nor androsterone, but it needed confirmation via isotope ratio mass spec analysis because it's an endogenously produced metabolite. However, Austrian, a selective androgen receptor modulator, is not. It is something that's not supposed to be there at all. So as you would expect, when you have a SARM in your system, your B sample is probably going to come back positive as well. And indeed it has. So his test results for the B sample come back positive as well. And to make matters worse for him, if there was any ambiguity as to if this, you know, win is going to get turned into a no contest or whatever, like it's not good that he was literally in the ring fighting on the day of with drugs in his system, regardless if it's a microdose, regardless if it was inadvertent, regardless if it was contamination. At the end of the day, he had a amount that exceeded the acceptable threshold for a synthetic compound that is not supposed to be there, that is seen as performance enhancing on the day he's punching a guy in the head. So not good. However, he has also gotten his hair tested apparently. And his legal team has said, you know, it's come up negative. They believe there's contamination causing a positive test. King Ryan, I beat the case like orange juice. Let's go. The glove didn't fit. Okay, unfollow. LP. Logan is still gay button. <laughs> 29,000 likes. Jesus Christ. Here we go. You used Austrian to help you retain muscle while cutting weight. You had a bad cycle and got caught. It's over, bro. I'm slowly losing respect for Ryan. This is a perfect example of people who are just like, Your B sample came back positive. Fuck you. That's basically the extent of what's going to happen here. For a lot of people, regardless of how much information comes out that is positively reinforcing his case, as a pro athlete, you should not, especially the top of your sport, like this was absolutely on Ryan at the end of the day. Regardless if there was inadvertent contamination or whatever, like you are responsible for what goes into your body is what people will say regardless. So for Ryan, he has this hair test supposedly and his lawyer's legal team says, Ryan Garcia is committed to clean and fair competition, has never intentionally used any banned substance. Soon after being notified of his positive test, Ryan voluntarily had his hair collected and shipped to Dr. Pascal Kintz the foremost expert in toxicology and hair sample analysis. The results of Ryan's hair sample came back negative. This is consistent with contamination and demonstrably proves that Ryan had not ingested Austrian over a period of time. The only way he would have had any advantage whatsoever in the ring. Ryan has voluntarily submitted to tests throughout his career, which have always shown negative results. He also tested negative multiple times leading up to the fight against Haney. All of these factors combined with his ultra low levels... <laughs> interesting legal jargon ultra low levels from samples taken on april 19th and 20th in the billionth of a gram range point to ryan being a victim of supplement contamination and never receiving any performance enhancing benefit from the microscopic amounts in his system we are certain that one of the natural supplements ryan was using in the lead up to the fight will prove to be contaminated or in the process of testing the supplements to determine the exact source so you know i think it's likely that something he did cause contamination, um, whether it ends up being one of the supplements that he took or not, you know, it's probably the most likely source of it. However, the dose that he got, was it performance enhancing after all? And was he, you know, because even if it wasn't his supplements, you could easily argue, oh, I just so happened to be taking this thing. It spiked and that's why it's in my system. But this is not a unusual strategy for some people who are looking to use a particular compound, having a product that is knowingly contaminated as a cop-out to be able to use that compound and then say it was your supplement. That said, would you do that with Austrian intentionally? Probably not. So here we know the amount apparently that was actually in his urine. So Garcia's tweet also led renowned sports nutritionist Victor Conti to write, Austrian has a 0.1 nanogram per milliliter allowable limit and Ryan Garcia had six nanograms per milliliter reported for April 19th, which is 60 times over the limit. 
History of B sample testing is 99% confirmation of A. So 60 times over the limit. It sounds like a lot. You know, it sounds like, oh, wow, you were clearly trying to like retain muscle while cutting weight or whatever, you know, like a lot of people jump to these conclusions. As you can see here, I can see why somebody would think that. Let's talk about the hair sample analysis. So he says he got, you know, hairs on his head and analyzed to assess some sort of further back time scale of Austrian ingestion. And it would show that indeed he didn't take any. Is it a reliable way to actually you know, refute a urine analysis. Not really, unfortunately for him. So human hair testing for SARMs, current knowledge and limitations as of 2022. In case of an adverse analytical finding, hair testing can be a complement to document the claim of the athlete, but of course, the result should not be considered as an alternative to urine analysis. This is because a negative hair result cannot exclude the use of the detected drug and cannot overrule the urine result. So at the end of the day, like you taking hair out of your head and sending it for analysis to some experts, like that's great. It could help your case maybe, but it's like, this isn't a validated method of SARM ingestion assessment really at the end of the day. Like this is still new and developing uh, methodologies around hair testing, which may be viable, but it is not a gold standard right now. And as noted, cannot be used to act as an alternative for the actual urine analysis that is um, facilitated through the actually governing the actual governing body. So despite the fact that he might have done this himself, like, you know, chain of custody on the actual sample, who knows like what went into this? Did he just fucking take it off his head himself and send it in the mail? Who knows? But at the end of the day, it's like, this isn't going to just eliminate the, <laughs> you know, the test results that he's had in his urine, it is just something to build a case against how it was not intentional is what he's trying to do, which is fair, but it's still ultimately not going to get rid of it. It just might reduce the scrutiny to some extent, but it is certainly not beating, you know, I beat it. Like he suggests, he says, I beat the case. Like, no, you're still fucked, unfortunately. And when I say fucked, I mean, like he gets the scrutiny and even if he proves that it's inadvertently spiked in his supplements or whatever, like you were still responsible and you're likely going to have your win taken away, I would think. And I have no idea what this means for all of his gambling winnings and stuff. Like that must be wild. I can't even imagine what that is like right now where you bet on yourself millions of dollars and then it comes to light that you cheated and if that gets held up, is there gambling entities chasing him now too? You know, like I can't even imagine what this guy's dealing with. So the actual dosage that he used, six nanograms per milliliter. What does that actually equate to? Well, first, what is the minimum efficacious dose for Austrian? So we look back at some of the clinical trials. I went over the Austrian pipeline, I believe in my first video. By pipeline, I mean the clinical pipeline in which it is being assessed for different indications. It is a research chemical at the end of the day. This is not an approved, FDA approved drug yet. It is still in clinical trials and has actually failed for lack of efficacy a few times, notably. So it's not that effective of a drug for performance enhancement, but it does enhance lean muscle growth and strength to some extent. But what is the lowest dose you can actually get something out of, at least based on the literature available, we have studies assessing as low as 0.1 milligrams all the way as high as 100 milligrams in about 1,500 subjects. And this was back in, I don't know when I wrote this article, but it was a while ago, but it comprises most of the notable Austrian literature that actually assesses um, dose increments and what actually equates to an outcome worth evaluating. So percent change in lean body mass is a metric of assessment of efficacy in many of these studies, but also strength. And of course, these aren't healthy populations, but you have to extrapolate what you can as to what is better than like baseline hormone production. And in general, what we see when we dig into the literature is that Austerine at a dose of about three milligrams is kind of where you start to get into the territory of increases in power, something that could be chalked up to useful in sport. Anything below that, you're not really getting, especially as a male, highly unlikely to be getting anything worth taking it to begin with. And to be honest, as mentioned in the first video, even if you were 
looking at this thing seriously, if you're an athlete with even a like room temperature IQ coach on your side would hopefully tell you this is not the compound you want to be using. Like there is no sane, not completely idiotic person who would ever suggest using Osterine for P as a PED in boxing. This is a completely absurd choice of a PED with how highly detectable it is. And just, you know, the hordes of anecdotes at this point of people who have been popped by accident, inadvertently most of the case, because it's such a stupid drug to take. All the people that want to hate on Ryan will talk about how Osterine is great for retaining muscle and blah, blah, blah. And it, it, it can be helpful for that for sure. But at the end of the day, like, you would pick a way, way smarter drug to be taking if you were trying to use an anabolic agent than like one of the most highly detectable, synthetic, <laughs> selective, not neurologically enhancing, non-psychoactive, like just shitty fucking anabolic drugs, realistically. Like this thing hasn't even been FDA approved. It is not the go-to choice for boxing enhancement. That aside, it is performance enhancing probably at around three milligrams, give or take. So th six nanograms per milliliter, 60 times over the allowable limit. What does that mean? How much would you have to ingest to actually get six nanograms per milliliter is the question. Because if he actually had a contaminated supplement, is it possible that it had enough osterine in it to actually give him performance enhancing properties at this three milligram dose? Or is it possible that he actually just fucking took it at three milligrams and it led to this six nanogram per milliliter test result? Well, that's where we look at this. Elimination profiles of microdosed Austrian mimicking contaminated products ingestion study. So in here, we have individuals being administered orally. 1 and 10 and 50 micrograms being assessed and analyzed using liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry. Now, when you look at these excretion profiles of the parent compound as well as its metabolites, you'll note that in general to get to a point where you are even reaching about six nanograms per milliliter in the urine, because you can see here, Austrian nanograms per milliliter, you have uh, excretion profiles of metabolites as well. Where are we hitting the six nanogram per milliliter mark? You are in microgram territory. So keep, keep in mind here, micrograms. How many micrograms are in a milligram? 1,000. So to get to three milligrams, which is probably the minimum efficacious dose, you're looking at 3,000 micrograms of ingested Osterine over the span of multiple days. Like this is not just one administration, you get an acute performance outcome that you can use in the ring. Like again, this is not a psychoactive, neurologically enhancing compound really. It is something that would be a purely tissue selective anabolic with a lack of androgenic activity you would use in a muscle wasting scenario for like women to not have viralizing outcomes, but have some anabolic action in bone or muscle. Like that is the typical desired outcome of a compound like this. Again, a reason why it's not very helpful for boxing or the ideal choice for a male, but peak Austrian concentrations range from 0 0.96 to 5.77 nanograms per milliliter and were observed four to 20, 20, 22 hours after ingestion. And the drug was detectable for even at these low ass concentrations for like, multiple days like this is ultimately pretty damn close to what he was tested for at the six nanogram per milliliter mark so you have these dosages being utilized as high as 50 micrograms so like 50 micrograms like what is that you're like like if you took 50 micrograms every day leading up to the fight you would get absolutely nothing out of it like to actually get to the three milligram dose you are like astronomically higher than this and so like to me that shows that this is very likely inadvertent contamination via something. And even if it was contaminated via something, it is essentially impossible for him to have gotten a performance enhancing benefit out of it. And realistically, even if he got like the minimum efficacious dose, how much would it have really helped him at the end of the day? Not very much. Like this is not, this is a drug that has essentially failed its uh, target endpoints. Like it is not an FDA approved drug. It is seen as like a primitive SARM that may have some utility in like, you know, elderly women for anti-catabolic action. 
but it is certainly not going to be like the fucking make or break for a boxer. Like you would be using a much higher dose as a male boxer to get like a significant advantage out of it. Now, perhaps that is a bit exaggerating three milligrams. Maybe it would do something for a complete natural who's depleted and weight cutting. Absolutely a case to be made there. But at the end of the day, like this isn't even close to that. What he ingested was an probably accidental microdose to the tune of like double digit micrograms at most. And that is not even close to imparting performance enhancing advantages as per the clinical literature, as per the extrapolated excretion profiles in these studies, no matter which way you spin it with this guy, even if he was trying, even if he was trying to dope, like, like his dose was like way too low. And even if it was an in inadvertent contamination, there's no way the dose he was using inadvertently would have helped him. So it's like, you know, I feel like there's, a strong case for him to show that it was not intentional. However, the fact remains that he walked into the ring with a over the like with a positive test result and fought a guy. So that is going to get, unfortunately, significant amounts of scrutiny for years to come. And that fucking sucks for him because it could have been avoided entirely just by being a little bit more careful with what he's putting in his mouth. So take from that what you will. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe if you want to see more deep dives into pharmacology, human biology, and other interesting shit. So, um, yeah. I don't remember how to do my outro. I'm still uh, getting back in the groove here. So, check out stuff in the video description if you want to support me. So, uh, yeah. I guess I'll talk to you guys soon.